Good afternoon, Charlie. Yes, Andrew, how do you do? Good. Um, I have another question for you. This one's from uh, Blake, Blake F. from Southern California. And he asks, Maestro, could you please say something about how to use a broadsword? Thank you, Blake. Yeah, I can certainly do that. This is a fun subject. We'll, we'll get into it. Okay, good. All we'll right. Go back to the camera. All right. Get to work. So the subject is how to use a broadsword. Uh, before I launch into that, I'd like to go back in history a little ways to show you how we got to the broadsword in the first place. And uh, you may know this, but it's always interesting material to uh, examine or even re-examine. Uh, originally, swords were short and used strictly, really, for cutting. Uh, if we go back as far as Egypt, we find the weapons were made out of uh, copper or bronze and uh, shaped something like this. And they were short of necessity because a soft blade of copper or bronze would easily bend or break. So they couldn't be made too long. Uh, with the uh, usage as a hacking weapon, uh, the short, soft uh, metal blade uh, and it, uh, it was more efficient than the long one. Uh, by the time you get down to Rome, uh, you've got iron being used to, to make these blades, so you could have a stronger blade uh, and tempered iron, uh, so it would be a, a, a stronger and stiffer uh, uh, because of the tempering. But still, a tempered blade uh, is brittle and will still break. So even though you're using iron, you were not able to extend the length of the blade because of the uh, breakage through heavy use. And then as you go down in time, we find the advent of steel uh, on the scene. And of course, steel sort of is at the heart of everything uh, since then. And uh, the steel blade allowed for a weapon that was very long and uh, and uh, very strong. Uh, a blade like this, uh, a steel blade, could be used in the most violent terms and still hold together without breaking. Uh, this is sort of a normal uh, broadsword which could be used with uh, single-handed or both hands, but because of the weight it was usually used as a two-handed weapon. Uh, broadswords came in many different uh, uh, styles and varieties, but they all had the same essential design. And many of them were longer than this. They had a much longer uh, broadsword that was made for stopping cavalry charges. Uh, the, the sword was made for, for, for uh, uh, actually uh, hacking through the armor that horses would wear, hopefully unseating the knight who had armor on, getting out of the saddle and on the ground where he was almost immobile because of the weight of the uh, armor. And then the broadsword uh, swordsman would walk up to that armored knight and hack him just like pounding into a tin can. And uh, on foot, the armored, the armored knight was virtually help, helpless. So you have a, a weapon that's heavy and strong and made for busting through uh, heavily armored people or horses for that matter. The, uh, the strategy with the broadsword, I just like to get into this a little bit uh, relative to armies meeting each other, was the strategy was the, the uh, front line of the defending army, which would be on foot, would have several hundred men standing in the front ready to receive a cavalry charge. And uh, they would all be holding a broadsword, big, tough, people selected just for the purpose, and their job was to stop uh, uh, the forward momentum of, uh, of men on horseback. Uh, the defense against that, from the cavalry point of view, was to armor the horses as well as the men in the saddle. And that cavalry charge would come thundering forward, the men on foot with the big broadsword or the Taurus sword, bull sword as they were called, would stand ready to stop the horses, to unseat the knight, and then go in and finish him off once he's on the ground, you see. Uh, from a technique point of view, you're looking at something very limited. 
I know the romantic idea of a sword is the big broad sword, and we see it in the movies all the time. Uh, uh, but that's strictly the romantic point of view. The broad sword had very limited use. It was too heavy for one-on-one -on -one combat on foot as a dueling weapon. It just was uh, too heavy. But as uh, as the metallurgy techniques improved, uh, the broad sword was lightened to come out looking something like this. It's still long. It's made of improved uh, metallurgy, so you could have less metal uh, to form a blade that is very strong and really good for hacking without breaking. And this became sort of the standard of uh, what we think of a broadsword. With this one, unlike the big heavy one, the, which is where we start for heavy hacking, we have a lighter broadsword which can be carried on one personally. So all of a sudden it's possible for individual combatants on foot to go at each other uh, with these because uh, a weapon this light uh, could be used defensively as well as offensively. Plus, because of the longer length of the blade, the point became useful. Uh, and because of the lightness of the blade, it, it could become useful. So you have a, an evolution in the blades, which, which is going from heavy to lighter. If we follow, oh pardon me, I have one more thing I almost forgot. The, the finest uh, broadsword ever made was a single-handed uh, single Viking broadsword. The Viking sword was probably uh, really the state of the art for a hacking weapon. But it also had the advantage because it's made of steel, there's less metal in it, it's lighter, it had the advantage of using of the point. So you can hack with this really well and you could use the point as well very efficiently. And uh, the, the Viking sword Could really you just hold it? Could you just hold it out? Oh. Okay. Okay, are we ready to go? Yeah. Then? Yes. Uh, the Viking sword became sort of the epitome of what a sidearm should be. It has enormous power. It's light enough to carry on your, your person. And uh, it has the, uh, the advantage of the cutting edge of the point, as we've already mentioned. Uh, the Vikings, I might add, uh, gave Europe uh, a, a renewed sense of the importance of the sword as a personal sidearm. Uh, the Scandinavians in the north believed that every man had a right to carry a weapon, and this is the weapon they liked to carry. And uh, it, was, uh, uh, it was so attractive, it was adopted by people all over Europe. It was just a wonderful design. And with it came a sense of the, the chivalric uh, idea of a veneration of the sword, you see. And uh, there was a whole philosophy of thinking uh, wrapped around the sword and its mystical qualities, you see. And that, that's when you get into uh, uh, late medieval times. Uh, I want to come back to this one again. Uh, a beautiful weapon. And uh, one of the, the interesting features of it, it, it it's... Uh, a symbol for the Christian cross, you see. And uh, the people that were spreading Christianity throughout Europe uh, used this as the way to convince people that they should convert from paganism to Christianity. So the broadsword had a big part in the conversion of, uh, of uh, the pagan world uh, to the Christian world. Uh, I think that's about where we're at now.